to improve or develop this economy. They've been called for an aggressive focus. And former CPP flag bearer for 2012, Dr. Abu Sakara, has called for change in direction to ensure that 2015 will mark the beginning of more aggression to addressing specific problems that face the key sector. Today, we're in his house, and he will have a discussion with us on the issues that will drive our country forward in 2015 and beyond. This is today's big story. Thank you very much for having us. You're welcome. It's coming to your place to have this chat. How are you, sir? I'm well, thank you very much. And Good. happy new year to you. Well, happy yes. new, many happy returns. Now, yes. the year has begun and the, the country has faced quite a number of challenges. One is corruption. We've dealt with corruption from the beginning to the end of the year. Many interventions, government announced that it put in place to resolve the issues of corruption. Some yielded results, some of the results we don't see. From where you stand, what should be the renewed focus of those in charge of the leadership of this country if we were to make any progress? I think the first thing is to deal with it as a comprehensive problem. Uh, often when we make claims about corruption, and charges about corruption, we look at it at an individual level. Of course it happens at an individual level, but it happens within an institutional context. And the key thing is to know the checks and balances in the system that would limit opportunity for corruption. And then also look at also the cultural and social changes and attitudes that are needed to curb expectations of individuals and of course of ourselves as to reduce the incidence and the temptation for it mm. and then at the individual level to ensure that you know we ourselves uh, adhere to value systems yeah. that prevent us from engaging in that and of course that they are punitive measures mm. to make sure that you know it's corrected now when you look at the institutional part of it which is where the larger part of uh, public discourse is concerned at the moment yeah. we have had key calls for institutional measures that will limit the areas uh, of responsibility of the presidency to ensure that the areas of independent appointment by other bodies mm -hmm. that will reduce the number of people who are beholden onto him so as to limit uh, the possible abuse mm -hmm. of power Yet, time and time again, we have seen no significant change in this. We have also asked that the legislator and the executive, we should ensure that members of parliament are not made ministers, so that the executive will be more in, uh, independent of the legislator is and vice versa. That could, is this well, something that could help that, with current well, corruption? I, I think it is in the sense that we all are aware <laughs> that if you are both a player and a referee, you cannot be expected to have a fair match. Yes. So if the executive are with the presidency and the legislators are checking and there's no possible, you know, I would say enticement uh, to become a member of the executive, uh, then you have more autonomy and independence. And that itself is an institutional check mechanism mm -hmm. so people think about it as the appointment it is not about the appointment it's about the two institutions and how they can best act as a check on each other to curb areas of willful abuse of office thirdly we look in our society uh, we all uh, are part of a culture of our society with certain expectations and I was at a university very recently giving a talk and I said, look, most of you here, when you finish, you are going to go to some big man or the other to help you get a job. Mm -hmm. And if he's your relative, you expect that you will be the one who gets that job. Mm -hmm. Part of that expectation contributes to, to nepotism mm -hmm. and itself part of corruption, mm -hmm. even though culturally people don't see it that, that way. way. You see, and there's all this big man syndrome of, you know, gifts and what have you. So all these things are an integral part of it. Mm -hmm. And when people live in a society in which they expect that and demand that, it all contributes towards it. So if you want to see the end of it, don't expect it. 
and we everybody has a role to play in that. Mm. And coming down to the level of individuals, I think the issue of the value systems and the ethics of the society, these are all things that we need to revisit anew. Mm. The value systems only come to life when there's a strong sense of national purpose of, uh, and a vision. And this is what we had at the beginning of the Republic, where it, there was a strong leadership that focused on what is the national purpose, uh, what is the driving vision, and the values that emanate from it, and the principles that adhere it. Some of them are ideological, but some of them are also universal mm. to the society, and they help to bind all of us into a certain mode of behavior. If you don't have efforts on all these three fronts, and you simply expect that by punitive measures alone you declare it and it will end. Then it won't, work. Then it won't end. And the fact that we've been calling for it and it is not ending suggests that maybe our approach to it is needs wrong. to be revisited mm -hmm. and we need to look clearly and frankly and honestly. Not that you say, you know, Mr. X is the person responsible and with the rest of us mm -hmm. are angels. No, mm -hmm. but that we are all part of the milieu and we expect certain standards of behavior of people in office and also we ourselves as part of the society. So in that sense, then you are approaching it in a comprehensive way. Now let, uh, let, let's, let's fast track it and move it away a little bit from corruption. Mm -hmm. If I ask you as uh, in your position as mm -hmm. somebody who aspired to be, uh, to lead our country mm -hmm. and with your wealth of experience, if I ask you to give me a review of how the year for you went mm -hmm. for this country, what issues would you pinpoint and bring them to the fore? I think the key thing that comes to light is almost uh, an underlining of the role that the state must play in formatting the path for the economic development. You cannot simply leave it all to the private sector alone. It won't work. It won't work. Excessive yeah, privatization. Yes, it, it won't work. Dependence yes, on yeah. You know, it is not a matter of the private sector being good and public sector being bad. The private sector has a role to play, and the public sector has a role in creating the framework mm. within which that private sector works and ensures that it goes beyond just providing an enabling environment particularly when the private sector is weak and small at our stage of development, to providing an empowering environment so that it goes beyond uh, where we take specific measures to ensure that we turn what is a comparative advantage so in you, our resources you feel that within the into year, a competitive advantage. You feel that within the year the private sector was not empowered enough? No, I feel uh, what I'm saying mm. is that within the year, we have come to fully realize that without taking uh, state, state responsibility, responsibility state and, lead role. and state read role and measures to intervene, mm. are you with me? Yes. We cannot simply leave it to the private sector. And what happens is that even though we don't accept that responsibility to start off with because we feel we are cornered by mm. global thinking, yeah. eventually you have to jump in to do it. But by the time you're jumping in to do it, you've already lost the opportunity of having planned ahead to do it in a way that will give you the optimum results. Mm -hmm. That's the point I'm making. And this is not just in Ghana. Increasingly around the world, the argument that capitalism alone uh, and private sector alone will solve all our problems has been hit on the head. It's fallen to shreds. Yes, not completely, but key elements of it have fallen apart because people realize that there is an area where you cannot allow rapacious greed to take over what is our common uh, inheritance and our common destiny. Mm. By the same token, we know that you cannot handle everything in the public sector. So instead of getting involved in this futile debate, mm. as if it's one or the, or other, the other, let us accept the roles each one must play in order that what is of importance, which is our national interest and our common good, can be advanced in a way that suits 
our situation, mm. where we are now, and where we are now, our private sector is very weak to be able to compete effectively mm. with other uh, private big companies yeah. on the global stage. So we have to work backwards and see the key things, interventions for every type of you know, uh, activity which we can do. And one of the key things that has come out very clearly when we have had an energy crisis yeah. in which we sat back from strong intervention to correct it and do all we can to minimize this impact as quickly as possible. Did we really sit back? I mean, well, government will tell I you think, that they put measures yeah, to but bring see, a chairbo on stream and yeah, they put that measures is, that to That is get true. Them. And nobody is not denying that <laughs> measures were not being taken. But the question is, when well, you realize that this is going to affect everything else that we do, because it affects the cost of doing business, uh, it affects prices of fuel which transfer into everything else, uh, even the electricity tariff rates. So how many businesses have closed down? Yeah. How many, coupled with that, you had, of course, our financial crisis with depreciation of the CD, and it forced a lot of people out of business. That when people hear that, they say business, it must be business when they have money. But what about the jobs of the ordinary people who were working in those mm. businesses? So we must stop this compartmentalized thinking that, oh, if it is business, it is rich people, so, you know, it doesn't matter. Actually, it is the people inside of that, the ordinary people who are most impacted by So this. if you were President John Mahama, yeah. what would you have done different? Well, I think for me, mm. clearly, you exploit your areas of advantage. The first thing is that you look at this West Africa region. Who do we have a very special relationship with? Nigeria? Nigeria. They didn't honor the promises well, for the but gas supply. The, the, West that, gas it was not line. simply a matter of honoring the promises. We have a contractual obligation with them. Uh, of course, it is said that it is more profitable for the gas to be sold to yeah. Saudi Arabia and for them to pay the cheap penalties. But this is a case in point where I think with the right kind of assembly of people going there to make negotiations, lobbying, but, and also impress upon them mm -hmm. how important this is to us. It may not be important to them because in their economy, this is a very small thing. thing. And in all probability, it may even miss the radar mm. of the president because this is not something which, you know, is very big for them. For them. But if we let people know the state of urgency we are in and how important it is to us and demonstrate that, uh, then I think we would have got perhaps a different response. Uh, and these are the kind of things where we have to, you know, sit up and take the lead just to show that we really uh, are desperate and because of our special relationship in the region we need you to do something for us on this particular one because it's going to affect everything else in the mm -hmm. economy secondly even the atwabo uh, gas plant gas plan. i think that when things have a high order priority sometimes we have what is called management by walking about which is to say you're not going to do anything particular, but the fact that you are pacing about restlessly like a lion around the shop floor makes people sit up and press more. And also sometimes it allows you to see the bottlenecks hmm. which may be missing, missed uh, so that at the end of the day we can have faster delivery. So you feel so, the president is not oh, in touch I know, I, I, with the I, situations I, I, that I feel, I feel that the way we have managed it as a country has not shown the level of urgency that was needed bearing in mind the degree to which it has such a pervasive impact on, on the entire economy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I feel that we should have put much more emphasis on this. That is not to say we don't appreciate yeah. the progress that has been made. A lot more could have been done. In the context of it. So Going forward in 2015, mm -hmm. what we would like to see is not that that just is done, but that it needs to be done as quickly as, as possible, possible to cut the hemorrhaging that is happening in very small businesses having to pay these very high 
electricity rates mm -hmm. and also having to uh, rely on a very unreliable source of electricity in order for these businesses to survive. And that is very important, you see, because you have to take a look at the community. You have to go into town. And anybody, you don't need a, a world economist to tell you <laughs> yeah. that, you know, the flow <laughs> inside of it's Accra. Not, it's not going Even well. the, tra <laughs> the, the amount of traffic alone will tell you that things are not as they were. Mm. So I think these are the things which we don't need to make uh, too much noise about. political capital out, out of, of it. Mm. Because right. it affects all of us. That is not to say that we cannot point out where you know, things need to be corrected. But let's do it in the sense of what is in our national interest uh, so that that criticism will be taken on board mm. and then we implement it for the good of all of us. Let's look at agriculture. Yes. Government's commitment to agriculture, investment, budgetary allocation. Are we serious with agriculture? Well, that is a question in which I have a very short answer. Considering that it is still contributing over 30 percent <laughs> to our GDP and also it is a big source of our you know source of income mm. and it has such a pervasive impact on cost of living for people I would say no, no. because when you take the budget you see you have to strip these things down if you want to see you know uh, the, comp uh, the, the, the true nature of a problem you should take it apart you take that budget for agriculture, how much is for salaries, maintenance, stationery, all those routine things, then out of that, how much is left for operations? So often you find in that budget, people have salaries, yes, they have money for electricity in their offices, but often they cannot move. And agriculture is not a job which you do from a desk. Mm. For the most part, it is the operational part of it that gives additional contact time for somebody to be able to get the right input on time or the right advice on time mm -hmm. or even strategize to choose the right mix of crops on time or even look well ahead to strategize how they will get their crops moved from the field to the rural uh, villages on time and even storage. All these things are things that require a lot of contact, mm. especially when you deal with a large population that are unfortunately illiterate mm. and for which planning and organization doesn't come naturally. People get up when the sun gets up and they do things until the sun goes down, they go back the next day. So those kinds of contact times are very important because it is through that that you are able to deliver those changes in innovation to increase productivity and also the information needed uh, to use the technologies that will bring about additional productivity increase. So what? If invest you are, more money, yes. invest more money into technology, invest more money into farmers' uh, sustainers, invest more money into construction of access routes to agricultural of course, communities. Of course. What exactly need to be done? Well, I think you need to do all of those things, but also you need to do it in this targeted way. Mm. Uh, because also just broadly applying the effort mm -hmm. will not give you the additional productivity increase that you like or you seek. We must target certain zones, certain crops, so that the effort seeks a certain amount of increase that is for a specified crop mm -hmm. or a specified enterprise. That way all the activities can be tailored to that but just generally creating it uh, that you may have a lot of movement but then it doesn't lead to, to, to the uh, mm -hmm. end, a desired result. In addition to that, we have to look at uh, the whole issue of the value chain. Value chain. You know, we talk about this value chain so many times. You see, for a lot of the time, it is not for lack of knowledge, it is for lack of implementation. And that is why I use the statement management by walking about. Yeah. If the supervisors are not supervising, then the supervised are not doing what they should do. 
those are all small small things along the line we need to get them done at the right time now you and i know that the minister of finance does not control the weather yeah so we must target all our planning activity to follow the weather because the weather dictates how the crops or animals will perform mm. you see so if we don't do these things on time and they get done at the wrong time just out of bureaucracy you don't get the desired result yeah, so it. what you see is ups and downs just due to luck mm. but we must have a very more much more definite purposeful action with a target in mind mm. so that we can see the kind of productivity increase the kind of increase in value addition for different types of uh, products that will come onto the market at a certain price it's not just a matter of them being produced mm. you and I go to the market when we go there we are voting we are voting for or against the Ghanaian entrepreneur and you have a fixed income just as I do yeah and what is in your mind when you're in the market is how far can I make this money stretch mm. to get as much as I can you can and in the process of doing that if we are not helping our producers value add addition uh, and processes to come to the market at certain particular prices then we have failed then you see that we ourselves vote against our own mm. entrepreneurs mm. because the system that was supposed to empower them mm. has not done that because it's not been very specific. Doc, yeah. let's, let's talk a little bit about your uh, political ambition whilst we're here. I mean, you, you've led the CPP, you led the CPP in 2012 to try to become president. Now, after elections are over, we do know the system we have in our country, winner takes all, expertise like yours are not harnessed for the, the good of the nation. When you sit, you sit back and you look at it this way, sometimes it makes you want to give up. Are you still politically ambitious? <laughs> well, uh, you have to understand why you get into politics in mm -hmm. the first place. Uh, I think some of us uh, were technocrats, uh, development-oriented, mm -hmm. who came into politics because we thought, uh, and still think, that by using the public purse, you could have a much bigger impact doing things a different way mm -hmm than you can your own private income. That's I was right. involved in private activities. I had, uh, you know, philanthropic organizations, I have a rural bank, I have uh, some NGO, and I do my private farming, mm -hmm. etc. But to scale that up and have it nationwide is not something any individual can do. Uh, so you think that by engaging with the system, you will get the opportunity to be the gatekeeper at the point of decision making on the allocation of the resources of the country so that you can impact on the scale of these things mm. that is the purpose so in addition to that you have to look at what goes on beyond that what happens beyond that is to change the paradigm so that the younger men and women what they can achieve in their lifetime will be more than what we could achieve. Because uh, you spend a lot of money on your children as you I You still have an answer. No, I'm you... coming. Okay. You spend a lot of money on your children mm. as I do. Mm. Yes. To give them the best education so that they can reach a higher potential than maybe we have achieved. We did. That is what we in our generation can do for them. And when we engage in public life, that is really the objective mm. so that you can raise the ceiling of achievement for people to become what they have potential to become, mm. irrespective of their background. And that is really at the core of our founding fathers' visions, that we will become an example mm. of the best that an African can be, can be and have the best living conditions to show that we are also capable of managing our affairs, to stand shoulder to shoulder alongside all other races and countries in the world. If you continue to have that as a vision, it is impossible for you to give up 
because it means that every investment you have made towards that, you know, you are throwing it away. But it does not necessarily mean that you will always be pursuing one particular strategy of seeing that uh, vision come into being. It may be that there may be other ways in which you can have a greater impact. Are you looking uh, at these other ways? I oh, mean... I have explored. In fact, mm -hmm. I have continued during uh, this period to look at, you know, basically uh, social entrepreneurship uh, in agribusiness, okay. uh, where I'm not only working on my own nucleus farm, but I'm mm -hmm. involving some villages in the process as well to impact on their lives, but at the same time scale up the operation to have a bigger but impact. But direct and active uh, direct, public or party directly. politics yeah. is uh, going to take a back seat no, for a I, while. No, I don't think so. Because Are you going to see, put yourself up for uh, uh, the flag bearer of CPP again? Well, I think it's something which is a very different kind of question. Mm -hmm. uh, I think when we talk about you know pursuing political engagement, I think I will always be involved in that because I don't see that uh, what I do in life to try to improve myself, improve other people around me is, is different. Mm. Uh, for me, that boundary does not exist. Mm. Uh, however, in terms of pursuing specific leadership opportunities within parties or otherwise, you will continue I think you to. need to look at the situation that the organization is in. Uh, first of all, a realistic assessment of all the political groupings will show you that they have different operational capacities. And those different operational capacities come to bear in the context of elections. And that it may be more productive to spend your efforts in the meanwhile to achieve those operational capacities within the organization of your institution before it comes to contest. Hmm. But, and I think that is very important because, you see, if you go to a horse race, you will see them parading the horses and people will start betting on the horses because they like the build of the hmm. steed and they think it can really do well, etc. But you've never seen them parading the jockeys who ride the horses hmm. because without the horses, the jockeys are useless. Hmm. So it is not really a matter of who is going to ride the horse, but ensuring that we present a good horse, well fed, which can compete in that race. And that is my focus at this time. Right. <laughs> Dr. Busaka, let me ask you before yes. I leave you. Yeah. Do you have hope for Ghana in 2015? Where oh. do you see us going? Do you see us surmounting the energy challenge that has faced us? and dealing with the key issues, nitty-gritty issues that have, have bogged us all the way from, from two, uh, 2014, energy, petroleum, gas. I think that the prospect of uh, overcoming the energy crisis uh, in 2015 is good. Uh, has opportunity. Okay. But I think the leadership needs to run or ride gunshot on that mm. carriage. Right. We can't afford to sit inside and the carriage. The same old we must things. sit on the carriage and make sure that it doesn't deviate anywhere yeah. and it gets right to the destination on time. I think okay. this is what we need to see. Right. Uh, so there's a, po a prospect of that uh, with several of the interventions. That, although I would think that it will be later rather than earlier in the year. the year. But being in opposition, we have to demand that it is earlier. <laughs> right, uh, Dr. Sakara, we're grateful for your Thank time you very on much. today's Thank big story. You. Dr. Sakara joined us on today's big story to share his expectations with that and some of the things that he would like to see. My name is Stephen Antti and we'll be right back with the Interactive. Do stay.